Hey guys and welcome to Mind Time. I wanted to take a moment to show you guys how to quickly and easily s install Nice Hash Miner. Uh, if you've seen my other video about Kudo Miner, the idea is similar. It's a different platform. Um, they're both great for beginners. They provide fast startup and auto switching um, so that you can mine when it's profitable or you could make it so that the miner automatically mines when you're not using the computer so then your GPU is available avail available wow for everything else that you want to do um, and then if you're not using it then the nice hash can use your GPU to earn you extra money of course I always recommend checking to see what your actual profitability is because it's possible you may lose money through electricity consumption um, but uh, that's another video anyways so real quick how to install nice hash miner first you're going to go to nicehash.com and you're going to create an account and log in i'm already uh, logged in so i'm going to go to my dashboard on your dashboard you're going to go to manage rigs and view stats from here you can click download miner or add ASIC. In this situation, uh, since I'm using a GPU on a computer, we're going to use nice hash miner. And we're going to go ahead and download. Uh, that takes us to a GitHub link and we're going to download the latest version. And then we're going to go ahead and open that up and run. Agree to the terms of service and uh, I'm gonna do a clean install here alright and then we're gonna go ahead and hit finish we're gonna accept the terms of service select our language and then um, <clears throat> from here if you go to your nice hash it should have popped up with a mining address you can hit copy and you can enter Bitcoin address manually or you can log into your account or use their um, QR code system that was just up there So we're going to go ahead and right now it's downloading all of the different miners because all nice hash is really doing is setting up different miners to mine according to what's most profitable and doing it automatically. So it's not as um, difficult for beginners to get into. For beginners, it's just a couple clicks of a button as opposed to, um, you know, typing in specific lines of code in uh, terminal style interfaces and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And so now we're here. So if we click on devices, we can see what devices we have available. Uh, so we see my CPU and then also my GPU. We can view different information. Uh, currently, they're both stopped in mining, that is. Uh, it shows a temperature on my GPU, but not my CPU. Sometimes different devices uh, won't show in this software or a lot of other softwares but um, this does try to provide you what information that is available to it. Um, for these devices, I would recommend first going in and going to your benchmark tab. Doing a drop down of these, the different types of mining software you can use and making sure they're all enabled. And you can actually go to plugins and install additional mining software and of course update um, the ones that are there. Once you do that, it'll add additional benchmarks to this tab. With additional benchmarks, if you go ahead and enable them, what the software is going to do is it's going to try to run each of those mining softwares. It's going to benchmark them to see how profitable they are and how your hardware does with them. And then, after that, it's going to choose which, um, which mining software gave you the most profitability and then it will go ahead and run that ongoing. So for the sake of time I'm not going to do all the installs and everything right now but I would recommend installing and updating every mining software in here and then going to your benchmarks and enabling every one. 
you can do the same thing with your CPU um, and then if we come back to devices we can or the dashboard you can hit the start button or here for start all now as you can see the um, two pieces of hardware are currently benchmarking so that's where it's testing each mining software seeing what sort of profits they produce and then at the end it'll choose the best one so if we go under benchmarking we can see this one's currently benchmarking so there's no results yet um, under this one we let's see here currently um, this one is benchmarking and these ones are pending so it'll go back and do those there was an error on this one so that one won't be ran in the end um, <clears throat> So I'll go ahead and leave this here. We'll let it benchmark, and then we'll catch up after it's done and um, see what the results are. And with that, there may be a couple prompts, especially if this is your first time installing it, where your computer wants to block different mining software. So just hang around to, uh, in case the screen pops up and it's, uh, you wants you to allow that software. And if any of these um, <clears throat> console looking things pop up, that's just different miners running. Just let it go. There are settings that we can adjust later on that'll allow us to hide those so then you don't see those. Let's say this is your regular computer and you don't want to see that. You just want it tucked in the background. Then that's fine. Actually, um, if we look, the uh, CPU up here is done benchmarking because there was only one option for it. So it tells us <clears throat> what it was mining. Uh, the miner the speed that it did it at, how many bitcoins in 24 hours based on um, the mining speed and that it's currently mining. So let's go back to the dashboard here. Um, we can see that current profitability is 0.35 uh, MBTC per day which is about 82 cents. Now since the GPU isn't actually mining yet that's just considering the CPU. Um, if we go back to devices, we can see that this is still benchmarking. So let's go to benchmarks and we can see it's benchmarked a couple other things here. We can see the speed that it did each of those and then also the bitcoins per 24 hours. Now, since these are all different algorithms, the speeds aren't directly um, comparable because it's apples and oranges. It's two different things. They're going to mine at different speeds and they pay at different amounts. So you can go over here and look at which um, one is producing the most bitcoins per 24 hours, but the software is also automatically going to do that. Now, this is one of those pop ups that I was talking about where it's um, it wants us to allow access for that software. So we're going to go ahead and allow that and so it can continue to benchmark that software and benchmark all of them. You should only have to do that once um, and then it should be good forever. So while these are benchmarking, let's go ahead and look at the settings just to get an idea of some of those things. So your wallet address and your worker name, uh, don't change your wallet address unless you want your payment to go somewhere else. Your worker name, you can name this whatever you want. So I'm going to call this Chuck's PC. And then um, you can do different things like setting your electricity costs. So I'm going to make that 10 cents. And then um, if you do the daily net profit, what's going to happen is it's going to show you your actual profit in the in nice hash after um, it assumes electricity costs. We're also going to change our location to something closer. So this was the only one in the US, so I'm going to pick that. That's going to reduce network latency and hopefully speed things up a little, which is a minor increase, but it, it, it could help. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and auto update nice hash miner. Uh, we're going to go to the advanced settings. We're going to auto start mining. So then it automatically starts when uh, nice hash miner starts. We're going to run it on startup, so it automatically starts nice hash when my computer starts. Um, 
we're going to minimize nice hash to the tray automatically. So then it's just out of the way. I don't have to see it. Um, I'm going to show the GPU bus ID. Um, it's just so then uh, let's see here. I believe I got to save those settings first or restart, but it's going to show the bus ID next to the hardware, which is probably less important on this situation. But if you did have a miner with a bunch of GPUs, it's going to make it easier to identify which GPU is which. Um, let's see here, continuing through these. So here's another option, start mining when idle. Uh, this is probably what a lot of people want to do if this is their regular computer. If you click that, NiceHash will only start mining when you're not using your computer. That way, you have your GPU's power for or, and your CPU for whatever else you're doing. And then once your um, computer is idle or you stop touching the mouse or keyboard, in this instance for 60 seconds, then it'll automatically start mining again. Uh, these switching amount uh, these are going to be time and this is going to be profitability that's saying depending on the profitability of different miners when to switch so if another miner becomes more than two cents more profitable than the current one you're using then switch um, let's see here and then so this option here hide mining windows that's what I was referring to when we can make these uh, console looking windows disappear so then they just aren't there at all and then minimize will keep them but just put them in this bottom bar for now I'm gonna do minimize um, although these are already up here so I'll minimize them all right so now let's go back and let's see our benchmarks are completed on both the CPU and GPU um, some of them did fail but that's expected and then each other one was benchmarked and identified a speed and uh, how many bitcoins per 24 hours it is um, mining. So now this software is mining this one, Dagger Hashimoto, and it's this one has more bitcoins per hour than any of the other ones, which is probably why the software chose that one. So we go back to devices, we can see um, the GPU and CPU are running at near 100% load. Uh, we can see our temperature and our profitability. And then we can also see our current profitability per day between the two of those. Now I'm going to try and switch over to, um, let's see here, back into our dashboard. And hopefully on this, we'll be able to see, yep, so here's uh, my rig. Uh, it just says Chuck's. I, I don't think I can put a space in the name, so maybe I should have done Chuck's underscore PC. And then it's showing the different devices and the stats related to those. Um, and then, although there's not going to be much information right now because we just started, these charts are going to go ahead and show you uh, trends of what your um, mining speeds are, uh, your payouts, etc. If you come down here, uh, it's going to show you your payouts. I believe uh, it takes your unpaid amount and applies it to your nice hash account every four hours, possibly. Uh, so every four hours, you're going to, you know, you're going to accrue balance, and then it's going to drop and pay into your account. And then four hours later, it'll do the same thing. Um, under Rig Manager, you can also see all your rigs if you have multiple ones here. Um, and you can also set uh, settings for each of your rigs as well. Um, so then you can make it so every rig is set up the same exact way or you know, with a default set of settings or that sort of thing. Um, and then also if you hit your wallet up here, uh, I prefer not to because it does show my address, but that'll give you um, your options to withdraw and deposit to this account. Anyways, so that is going to be a quick overview and an easy install and nice hash um, to get you going and started in a very short period of time. 
This has been Mind Time. Thank you. Good luck. And if you have any questions, make sure to comment below. Thanks.